The medieval city of Cogne sur Mer charmed us with its stunning hilltop views, the deep blue waters of the Mediterranean Sea, and my favorite pastry, pan au chocolate, with its flaky layers and rich bittersweet chocolate. Welcome back to Fine Jean Marie, where we share our lives as full-time travelers and the connections we make along the way. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Judy. And I'm Kevin. And no, Judy hasn't grown to enormous heights at this point. <laughs> She's just enjoying standing on a ledge. Having, look at this beautiful scenery. It makes my heart burst with joy to be tall. <laughs> <laughs> but she won't be as soon as she steps down. <laughs> Keep the illusion alive for me, please. I'll try. Some people get to have a birthday. Some people extend it to a weekend. Some people, maybe even a week. I picked a whole month. This is a special birthday for me because my dad passed before his 61st birthday. And this is my chance to turn 61. And I did in a beautiful place, Cognes de Mer, on the French Riviera. We do have an episode all about me sharing my thoughts about my father's passing. So we'll link that below. We've been to Paris a couple of times, but we've never been anywhere south of that. And so the French Riviera was an opportunity to see Southern France. And most importantly, it was an opportunity to be somewhere warm. We've spent a lot of the first six months of our travels being colder than we would prefer. <laughs> This is literal hell. <laughs> I told you that. So this has been a pleasant surprise. And more balance than Egypt, where we got a little too hot sometimes. We start our day by taking a long walk along the promenade. But before we get there, we want to show you the magnificent views of our apartment and what's outside of it. That's uphill. <laughs> We're going to show you downhill now. We love that you can see the water and the mountains and the winding side streets. Judy wrote more about this in Judy's journal on our website. The wind staying in this hilltop location is that it has a shuttle that runs daily to get you to the top of the hill. Hooray for me. Beautiful to see all the flowers in bloom and the area is covered with them. But it's also covered with jasmine, which is really intense for me. It makes me uh, sneeze and gets me uh, really irritated sometimes at the strong smells. The promenade that we're on runs all the way to Nice and the beach behind us is not exactly sandy, it's quite rocky, but that hasn't stopped anybody from coming out day after day to sunbathe or get in the water for a little bit. Yeah, not easy to walk on these stones either. They're not practical to take home with us as full-time travelers, just some extra unnecessary weight, but they're beautiful now. Yeah, lovely. Put them down. Can't have them. This is France after all, so don't be shocked by the topless sunbathers or the Speedos. And no, we did not record any of them. Especially the guys in the Speedos. <laughs> or the topless girls. <laughs> sure. On a daily basis, we also see fishermen and a rowing club and the typical water sport activities you would expect to see. There are dedicated walking and bicycling scooter paths lined with palm trees. And you can rent quad cycles right on the promenade. It's Sunday on the beach in Cognes de Mer. We're now also seeing a lot more of the pedal bikes and you can see behind me that they're putting up some bounce houses. There are lots of benches if you want to stop to soak in the sun and gorgeous views of the Mediterranean Sea. You can rent lounge chairs and umbrellas if the idea of laying on the rocks isn't appealing. When we walk by these chairs in the morning, they're typically empty and we got to wondering if they ever get filled. It looks like three o'clock on a Friday, there's actually some people in them. On one of the days that we were here, there was an artist event selling paintings along the promenade. We also enjoy strolling past the permanent metal sculptures. We love that there are plenty of public bathrooms all along this route and throughout the city as well. The doors will shut automatically. They're equipped with toilet paper, soap, water, and hand dryers. And after your exit, it flushes, a wash cycle begins and you have to wait a minute 
or you can go back in. But everything's scrubbed clean and disinfected. And after about 60 seconds, it's ready to go again. And they're free. The hours for eating here are a bit different from a lot of the other places that we visited. You can't really get a breakfast at most places except for like a coffee and a croissant. Or a baguette. Lunch shuts down pretty early here, so don't expect to really be able to eat much in the way of lunch after 2.30 or so. But you can get a drink because a lot of places stop serving food, but they serve drinks until about 5 p.m. or so. And we've walked up to places where we thought they were all sitting down to eat lunch. They had, oh, no food, no food, drinks. And a lot of these places that close after lunch don't reopen for the rest of the day. So dinner isn't really available until around 7.30 p.m. or so, but it's not always the same restaurants that are open for lunch. So we've found that our choices for dinner are somewhat limited. We're here at our favorite coffee shop. Every morning we go to Aux Enfants Gat and it is a beautiful patisserie. They make all their own uh, breads and pastries and coffees, and we love to come here every day, but it can be a little hard because the tables are always in high demand and we have to wait in line and then kind of scrounge for a table. Kevin typically gets a pain au raison, but I am a sucker for the pain au chocolate, which uh, I'm going to give you a taste test because you could just see all of the flaky layers that are in here and how the chocolatey goodness. Very flaky, very chocolatey, very it's very amazing, very yeah. amazing. Buttery, French, and I do like the Pan Zone, but they often sell out very quickly. They don't make as many, so I am okay with the Pan Chocolat. It doesn't hurt my feelings at all. We're, we're kind of disappointed that we don't get uh, table service but it's not the worst thing ever here because the patisserie is amazing and so walking through and seeing all of the incredible desserts and baguettes are awesome and the fact that there are plenty of people you see grabbing one or three <laughs> baguettes and before they leave they've already snapped off a knob of it and they're starting to eat it because it's just too delicious <laughs> to wait until you get home to have it and their cappuccinos are really good really generous chocolate on top delicious bon appetit bon appetit and getting to sit outside every day in this beautiful area isn't so bad either We liked the Bellinis and Caesar salad at Los Angeles. So what better to have on the French Riviera than a true Italian pizza place, Le Trois Farines, which we have our picante pizza, and surprisingly, the waiter speaks more Italian than French half the time. <laughs> it was easier for me to communicate once I realized we weren't needing to speak French and we could find a commonality in Italian. We practice Italian more. We enjoy getting Thai food from Soisiam and they have really good prawn crackers. Unfortunately, it's closed right now and too often it's closed when we come down here and actually just have that hangering for some Thai food. Right, they open at 7.30, so you have to only get dinner there. Restaurant Lake Romaldi is the top of the hill restaurant, one of our favorites, and it's just behind us over here. It's a short walk from our Airbnb, but it's a really steep walk, so it takes about eight minutes, a little bit of effort, even though it's really close to us. And Le Village is right behind us. It's good, but it's not nearly as nice as Le Romaldi. We celebrated Kevin's birthday at the delicious Le Beau Haute de Cagnes restaurant, which was a wonderful way to kick off another time around the sun. It's worth visiting the restaurants at the top because the food is delicious, the views are jaw-dropping, and you get the bonus of entertainment. We've always seen a bocce match pickup game here. big bummer is that the area tends to attract a lot of flies. So we're at Le Grimaldi, it's a hotel and restaurant, and I'm having one of the beef specials, Cote de Bouffe, and Judy's having a fly-infested <laughs> salad. The flies are crazy out here. Everything's great, except the flies. <laughs> but it almost makes it prohibitive, so you're eating outdoors, which just feels wonderful, but the flies are not so fun. 
Square Bordet is the main bus area in the middle of town. It's just a short walk from the supermarket and it's also very convenient to get up the hill for us since it's a long ride. We wait here and grab our bus, the number 44. It's not a long ride, but it's a really steep hill. A really steep hill. This is our 44 bus that we take up the hill all the time. And luckily it's electric, so no fumes. Bonjour. One of the crazy things about the bus making its way around our neighborhood was that it was a very, very tight squeeze on a few different occasions. And sometimes it looked like it was going to crash into a building. Sometimes it did bump into stuff. <laughs> That's true. On Wednesdays, there's a series of markets that appear and they sell vegetables, clothing, artwork, jewelry, pretty much anything you can think about. And also when we were here, there was a special celebration for an Italian market. And we saw a whole bunch of delicious uh, cheeses and sausage and... Uh, we bought some too. <laughs> we, we didn't let this opportunity pass by. <laughs> Our grocery store was good for the basics, but it really was lacking sometimes in the vegetables and the fresh fruits. There's a local cheese shop you can go to, but the fromagerie here, you can see, is pretty extensive. We've been doing our share of tasting delicious cheeses. And even more extensive than in Greece, you can see the huge selection of yogurts. And if you've never been to a European grocery store, there's an entire series of shelves of eggs that are not refrigerated. And I've been a frequent visitor of this section. The wine section here is very good wines for three to four to five euro. Not bad at all. We love this little farmer's market that is open on a regular basis. You just have to come when it's open because the hours are not extended. But much fresher ingredients than anything that you're going to get at the grocery store. Merci. 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 You can eat some now or later. A little now. <laughs> They're very hot, but it was recommended to me that we try these while we're here, so I'm very eager to do so. Mm. Salty, crispy, really delicious. You definitely will know that you're in France when you're here because it's definitely the prominent language being spoken. And it's a good thing that Kevin speaks a little bit more French than I do. He's been working through Duolingo. If you've missed that episode, we've linked it below. So he's been practicing his French and he can do a little bit more than the bonjour and the merci and the au revoir that I know how to do. Just not that much more. The communication at the hair salon was surprisingly difficult. I had an easier time in Egypt. So uh, we used a couple of Translate apps, uh, including Translate, that's an iPhone app, and also Yandex. But uh, we may do, it turned out okay, so. <laughs> The weather here has been gorgeous. We arrived in mid-May and we're leaving in mid-June. We've had a few days of rain, uh, including thunderstorms, but it's not been prohibitive and they haven't rained all day. The temperatures are pretty wonderful. Uh, Mid-20s in Celsius, basically in the 70s, and maybe lows at night in the 60s. Not really bad at all. In fact, when we're out there walking on the beach, sometimes I really want it to be a little more shady than it is. We've had a lot of sun. Well, I am grateful for the occasions when there is a little bit of a breeze. Oh well, yeah, and look at this tan. I've got such a deep tan right now. I don't know what I'm doing with this. <laughs> we're pretty happy with this area of the French Riviera. The train runs all along the coastline. It was a quick two stop to get to Antibes, where we visited the Picasso Museum, which we'll cover in our next episode.
Our biggest con was the fact that there were tons of mosquitoes and I slept for several nights with my head covered under the blanket. Uh, yay for top sheets uh, because we got bit mercilessly. Yeah, and the windows are beautiful because you have this gorgeous view. There's no screens, there's nothing to stop the bugs. Flies would come in, buzz around us, mosquitoes would come in, hide, and then bite us later. And Kevin was always walking around with either a, paper, a towel or some piece of paper <laughs> so that he could whack them. I was the bug killer. <laughs> there were air conditioning and heating units in the Airbnb, but I didn't see any way to turn them on, so we didn't get heat and we didn't get cool air, both of which we needed at different times during this trip. But it really wasn't a big deal because the opening the windows was sufficient except for the bugs. Except for the bugs, they kept coming in. Having a YouTube channel, what we need most is fast upload speeds. And this has been one of the worst, even worse than Egypt for us. So we actually had to take a train to an Apple store a couple stops away around the Riviera. To a shopping mall. To a shopping mall, which we don't travel to shopping malls ever, just to get our episodes uploaded. The good part is they upload in about five minutes once you get to that. This is also one of the more expensive cities for eating. I wouldn't say it's outrageously expensive, but when you're full-time travelers, if you're not cooking, which we have done most of the time, it, the meals have been a little pricier than we would normally pay. So what were some of our costs here in Cagnes Sumer during our time? We spent 31 days here at a cost of $1,374.21. That breaks down to $44.33 per night. And our morning cappuccino and croissants were €8.10 if I was getting a pain au raison. If we just did the pain au chocolates, both, both of us, then it was just €7.80. Two boulet scoops of gelato were €4.70. And my birthday dinner was €116, Euros, which was a Caesar salad to share, salmon, and a just okay beef entree. Of course, I had to finish the meal off with a cappuccino, and we did squeeze in a lemon cheesecake that we shared, and of course, half a bottle of wine to round it out. When we grabbed Thai food, it was 49 euro for our two entrees. And lunch at the mall with the Apple Store was 56 euro for two Caesar salads, cappuccinos, and a chocolate mousse that we split. We also split a pizza, and Kevin had a glass of wine for only 15 euros. So that was very affordable, and we did that multiple times because that Italian restaurant was excellent. And Le Village, which is also a restaurant on the top of the hill, cost 85 euro 90 for a steak, Thai chicken salad, and a cappuccino for me and a half carafe of wine to share. So as our month in Cagnes de Mer comes to an end, did you enjoy it? I loved it. It was very relaxing. I thought that some things were a little uncomfortable, like the restaurants weren't open at all times and there's a lot of hills. And sometimes I walk on the beach was a little sunny, but overall, wow, a beautiful place and easy access to the French Riviera. I could have done without the mosquitoes, but for the views and the scenery and everything else, it's a small price to pay. Right, a trade off for the warm weather. And although we ran out of time, I really would have enjoyed going to Arles and also Avignon. Uh, if you are a Van Gogh fan like I am, I highly recommend that you spend two days. You can get there by train. Uh, some of our hiccups along the way on this trip prevented us from going, but it's on our bucket list to return here and do those things. If you've enjoyed this episode, please give us a like and subscribe if you're not already. And check out FindingGMarie.com, Judy's journal there. Lots of great details of all our trips. Until next time. Until next time.